In most experiments, subjects move through stages and periods together. So all the subjects are always in the same stage or in the same period. However, that is not the case in all experiments. In some experiments, you want some individual subjects or groups of subjects to move through the experiment faster or slower than others. The way to implement this is what we discuss in this chapter. There are two levels at which subjects progress through a set tree experiment, and these are the periods and the stages in set tree. Now, one limitation that the program set tree enforces is that all subjects are always in the same period. You can never have uh, subjects in different periods at the same time. So the periods are only distinguished by being practice periods or paying periods, where the difference is that in practice periods, whatever your programs write into the profit variable in the subjects table is ignored for the payout calculation. Now the stages in set tree, there you have the option of having subjects being in different stages at different, uh, well, at the same time. And so you can have, for example, the first subject in stage one and the second subject already in stage three, if all of these stages allow that. You can also have a stage that requires that all subjects enter jointly, which means that if before this stage subjects have progressed at different speeds, um, faster subjects when they reach this stage will have to wait for the slower subjects to catch up until they all can enter this stage together. Stages can also be limited to admit one subject at a time, and stages can be skipped. And we will discuss how all of this is possible on the following slides. Furthermore, you can set the ending conditions for your stages. So you can, for example, make or set no light time limit. You can set a strict time limit after which everybody is forced out of the stage, or you can have a what I call a lenient time limit where the time counts down and people see that the time is up, but they just get a warning message without being forced out of the stage. And finally, you can use display conditions in the boxes, which you uh, see or saw in the box chapter, uh, to make the same stage look different to different subjects. And this way you can, for example, implement in the same stage different screens for different roles that subjects have uh, on in, in the same stage. What you see here is a stage dialog that Cetri shows you when you insert a new stage in your stage tree. The first setting you can make is the name of the stage, which must be unique because this is the name that is being displayed in the client's table while the experiment is running and it should tell you where in the experiment subjects are currently and so it must be unique. The next area here is the well, contains the starting conditions, and it starts with the option wait for all. If you select wait for all, that means that all the subjects need to enter the stage at the same time. So Setri will wait until everybody is in the waiting screen of the preceding stage before they're allowed to enter this stage. Start if possible is the opposite in a sense. Whenever a subject enters or reaches a stage that has uh, the setting start if possible enabled, they will immediately be put or given uh, into the stage. Now the start if condition here displays this field and it allows you to enter a condition that must be fulfilled for subjects to be allowed to enter this stage. And one typical application for this would be that at the when when they finish the previous stage, you set a variable um, for the subject equal to one, for example. So like say finish the stage, or finish stage is the variable. You set it to one, and then here in the condition, you tell Satri to count the number of people that are in the same group and whose variable finish stage is set equal to one, and only if that number equals the group size, which means that everybody in the same group has finished the preceding stage, then they're allowed to enter this stage. This way what you would, for example, program um, an experiment where groups could progress through the experiment together, but different groups can be in different stages. The next area here allows you to set, to tell Satri that only one person per group should be allowed into the stage. And you can use the priority variable in the subjects table 
to tell Satri in which order Satri should allow people to enter this stage when they are waiting in the waiting screen. And finally, the timeout area here, you can choose three options. The first is the default, if no input. What this means is that Satri will look into the stage on the waiting screen, and if there is an input field there, it will not force people out of the stage, even if the timeout has been reached, because they still have to make their entry. If there is no input field, they would be forced out of the stage into a waiting screen. If instead you select yes, that would mean they're forced out of the stage even if there is an input field. So you could have a case that subjects do not um, fill all input fields before progressing to the next stage. And if you select no, they will never be forced out um, because of the timeout of the stage. Finally, um, I recommend instead of the number here to use a variable because this way, a variable that is in the globals table, because this way you can use the period settings in the parameter table to adjust the time lot even during the experiment. And furthermore, I like to have all my timeout settings in one table, uh, in one program in the global, in the background of the stage because this is much more convenient, I think, to change timeouts uh, than to having to go through all of the stages. And the last point I wanna make is that if you set the timeout to minus one, then the stage runs forever, it never stops. Uh, the time does not count down at the top right of the screen. And you need to have people press a button to leave the stage, or you need to use the leave stage variable in a subjects table, but I'll discuss this at a later date. And the final thing to realize, if you set a minus one here, the stage runs forever, but that means if subjects click a button, the time at which they click the button, which is usually saved in the subjects table for them automatically, is saved as uh, 99999. So you cannot use this timing information because basically the timer, the clock has not started in Satri if you don't specify a timeout here. And that means if you want to use this timing information in your analysis, you must not set the timeout to minus one, or you need to record the timings yourself by using the getTime function. Another thing that I will discuss uh, at a later point. You can control which subjects are allowed to enter a given stage and see the active screen. And the way this works is as follows. When a subject comes, reaches a stage in the stage tree, the first thing that Cetric does is it executes the programs in the background of the stage. So in the stage header, if you want, before the active screen. Now, all of those programs are run, but if in one of these programs, you set the participate variable in the subjects table for this subject to zero, because by default it is always one. So if you set this variable to zero, then this subject will not enter the active screen of the stage, but will go right on to the, to the waiting screen. And of course, if the next stage allows the subject to progress further, the subject will go even further. But again, all programs in this stage's background will run, or in all stages backgrounds will run. And when the subject gets to the next stage, the participate variable will by default be set back to one. So if you want the subject to skip also the next stage, you need to set the participate variable to zero again for that second stage. The second variable I want to discuss here is the priority variable, which I mentioned before in one of the previous slides. Again, this is a subject table variable. And when you have in a stage set the at most one per group in stage um, option, then Satri checks the, uh, the priority variable before it decides which subject gets to enter the stage next if, if multiple subjects are waiting. And then always the subject with the smallest pri priority enters the stage first. If of course the priority is not set, which means it's, uh, it's, it stays at its default value, then subject enter randomly. Another very helpful variable is the leave stage variable in the subjects table, spelled um, as you see here with a capital L and capital S. If you set this variable to one for any subject, this subject is immediately kicked out of the active screen of the stage it is currently in and moved to the waiting screen. 
and that can be very helpful. Imagine that you have an experiment where you have an auction of one good and um, one of the subjects can click a button and uh, purchase this good. Then once somebody purchases this good, you may want to move on to the next stage and you may want to move everybody to move on to the next stage. Um, but only the subject that clicks the button directly basically leaves the stage. Uh, everybody else needs to be moved on using this leave stage variable. And you can do that by in the button um, that the subject clicks, having a program that sets the leave stage variable to one for all subjects. So not for the just for the one that clicks it, but also for all the others. And that way you can kick everybody out and move on to the next stage. A second uh, helpful variable is the repeat treatment variable, which is not in the subjects, but in the globals table. Now, normally at the end of the last period of an experiment, the experiment of course ends. However, if you set the repeat treatment variable to a value greater than zero, then when Cetri che checks this variable after the end of the last period or at the end of the last period, uh, Cetri decides to repeat the entire treatment with the same number of periods as you set for the first time around. And this can be very helpful to implement a random ending period. So for example, you could um, tell your subjects that the experiment ends with a probability of one sixth uh, after every, every period. Then what you would do is you would set the number of periods in the background of set tree to one and have a program at the end of the experiment or a stage at the end of the experiment where you as the experimenter have a chance to enter a choice, a number or something. And then you could, for example, throw a die, a physical die, and enter the, the outcome into your set tree. And then you tell subjects, for example, if the die shows a one, then the experiment ends. And if it shows any other number, the experiment continues. So you would throw a die, you would enter the number, and if it's a one, Setri would set would keep the repeat treatment variable at zero. But for all other numbers, Setri would set the repeat treatment variable to one, for example. And that would mean it would repeat the entire treatment one more time. So this one period. So you would have a second period and you could have a third period and a fourth period, depending on well your die throw. And whenever a one comes up, um, you would end the experiment. This is a very neat feature. The period number keeps incrementing as if it was all one treatment. And using a physical randomization device like a die has turned out to be more believable to subjects. So if you ask subjects whether they trust uh, random number generators by computers, they usually, or many usually don't trust them very much. But if you use a physical die, they're more likely to believe you that this was really a random choice. Now I have an exercise for you where you should learn to understand the repeat treatment variable and how to implement the random ending period. So what we'll be doing is to program a treatment with a random ending period that is determined by a die throw. And after you've done this, you will know how to control the ending period of a treatment from within the treatment and how to program experiments with a random ending period which is something that is often used to simulate um, decision environments where you have basically infinitely repeated decisions. So no ending in sight. That is often approximated by having a random ending period. The task in this exercise is to program an experiment that runs for nine periods and then only starting in period 10 ends with a probability of one sixth. Now I'm gonna give you some more advice to do how to do this. First, you set the periods in the background to one, the paying periods to one, and you set the header in the heading header box in the active screen in the background to not display the total number of periods. Otherwise, in the first period, Cetri will display period one of one, and that of course makes no sense. Then I would create at the end of the program a stage that I call random ending and set the participate variable for this stage to one if the period number is greater than nine 
and to zero otherwise, such that subjects only see this stage in the 10th period and thereafter. Now, in this stage, or when subjects reach this stage, you as the experimenter throw a die, or you ask a student or a participant in your experiment to throw a die, and then you need to enter the die throw into Setri. And the way you can do this, there are two ways that I can um, recommend here. The first is um, in this random ending stage, you have a box that only the first subject sees. So you need another uh, condition there in the display conditions. And the subject has to enter a number, a specified code, basically, that only you as the experimenter know. So you would go to this, the, the seat of the subject, enter this number, and then another box is shown, and you would there enter the die throw. This way, the subject cannot enter any number that the subject wants, but you need to do it. Um, and you have a way to enter the die throw into Setri. The other option is that you as the experimenter open a set leaf on your uh, server PC. So you have um, the number of subjects plus one as actual Setri subjects participating in the experiment. So if you have eight people in your lab, you set the number of subjects in the background to nine. And the ninth set leaf is the one on your experimental PC. And on this set leaf, you would show the random ending stage. So you would set, would set the participate variable such that only you see this stage. So for example, you open the final, the last set leaf. So you have su uh, subject number nine, and you would say in the participate um, setting here, period greater than nine, and you need the, um, the logical end, uh, subject equals equals nine. So subject number nine, then only you see this set leaf or this, this box and you only can enter the die throw. And finally, you need to set the repeat treatment variable, which you set to, um, to one if the period is less than 10 or the die throw is greater than one and to zero otherwise, which means in all cases where periods one through nine, or even thereafter, if the dive throw is uh, greater than one, you the, the experiment would continue, there would be another period. And there would only be no other period if the period is at least a 10th and the dive throw is a one. Please pause your video now. Now to find an optimal progression strategy within the period, that depends on you as the experimenter. So you have to think about what roles um, subjects have to fulfill, what tasks they have to perform, and whether, for example, different groups can progress at different speeds or individual subjects can progress at different speeds and whether, you, whether it makes sense for them to progress at different speeds because sometimes you need uh, the input of all people, the members of a group, sometimes not. So you need to make these choices. And once you have made these choices, you can use the wait for all option in the stage background to have them, to, to have Setri wait for everybody uh, for stages where all roles input is required, or use, for example, the start if condition where some conditions have to be met. And of course, the start when possible condition when no conditions have to be met and everybody can start the stage whenever they arrive at it. Now, some words of caution, th some things to consider when you think about optimizing the progression within a period. If you have subjects moving through the experiment at their own speeds, then of course, if uh, subject one is slower in one stage and subject two is state, uh, slower in another stage, you can save some time overall before, because the diversification between the times they take um, reduces the overall amount of um, time in the experiment. However, usually, I mean, this is at least my experience, you have the same subject being slowest in, in most of the stages, so you don't actually save much time. And then there is the big question, is it better for subjects to wait a little at many points in your experiment or a lot at one point. And I'm usually tending towards the former because people do get um, restless if they have to wait too long 
um, at one point. If, if it's um, spread out, it's usually easier to swallow. Furthermore, it's very important or particularly even more important than usual to make sure that all variables are defined in the background if you have people progressing through the experiment at different speeds, because it's even more easy here than usually than to make a mistake where a variable that somebody would like to or should be able to see has not yet been set because another subject should have said it and has not yet progressed to this point. So make very sure that you don't make a mistake here uh, by thinking through very clearly uh, the, the steps that people can take in the experiment, what are the extreme cases that could happen, and make sure that all variables are defined in the background. Also, check the rules for running programs in the table definitions that they fit your experiment. Look up the manual if you want details on that, because this is too involved for um, getting into the details here in this course. And make sure you account for subjects' progress when making calculations for them. So again, this goes back in a sense to this point of making sure that all the variables are set and everybody has taken all the decisions that they need to take for you to be able to calculate uh, things for them. And finally, allow a lot of time for programming and testing these types of experiments. They are much more error prone, so you should um, have enough time and enough runs with uh, different progressions, different uh, subjects being faster, slower, and so on. So try out everything and make sure it works under all circumstances. Now, sometimes despite SETRI not allowing you to have subjects in different periods, you may actually want this in an experiment. So what can you do? Well, you can simulate different periods by programming your entire experiment in a single stage and using stacked boxes, so just a number of boxes that are basically put on top of each other, uh, to simulate the different screens that subjects see. And you can switch between these screens using display conditions. So you have multiple boxes or even, and here I would highly recommend using container boxes, such that you can say the first container is screen one, the second container is screen two, and so on. And then within the containers, you can have multiple boxes arranged as you like. And you can use one variable to switch off the entire container and switch on another container um, if in the experiment the subject goes to the next stage or the next period, then you need to simulate it in this way. Now, one thing you need to um, account for is that you cannot use Cetri's built-in period uh, functionality to display, for example, which period subjects are in, because for Cetri they will all be in, in only one period together. So you need to create your own uh, period variable that you then also display in a user-generated header. So you, you build a box that displays, say this is period of one or five, and you use the subjective period as the variable in this item to display the, the period number. And finally, since you cannot put programs into the stage backgrounds because you only have one stage, you need to put them into the buttons uh, of the different boxes on the screen so that if subjects click OK on a box, um, they not only, this not only switches uh, a display condition such that another screen is shown, but it also does all the calculations that you need to happen before this new screen is shown. So you need to have these, cal these calculations in programs that are set into the buttons. Finally, let me say a few words about when programs run and who they run for. So first off, programs in the background, they run after the setting of standard variables. And we previously had a, a little list of uh, when things happen, including the parameter table and so on. So this was already noted there. Now programs in a stage run at the beginning of a stage. And uh, Cetri does not care about the participate variable here. All these programs run, and then the participate variable determines only who gets into the active screen. Programs in a button run for the subject pressing the button, and they only run for the subject pressing the button if they're also in the subject's table. Um, if, the, if the button is located in a contract uh, creation or list box, then it, the program only runs for the, the one row in the contracts table, for example, that, uh, that the box is displaying. 
and the programs only run after checkers. So if you insert checkers into a button, they go above the programs, they go in between here. And if the checker does not allow the, the decision to go through, so you have a no button in there and the subject clicks the no button, then uh, the programs never run until, of course, the conditions are fulfilled, the subject clicks again and the checker goes through. And finally, you can in your program specify a later command like this one, and then the program runs at the time that is specified here. So in this case, five seconds after this, this initial, the, the main program is actually run, will A be set equal to A plus one. 